problem properties, and safety for seniors. Details on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, October 25, 2012. I'm Sarah Colvin. Next Thursday, Town Council will conduct a public hearing on a series of proposed changes to town code as it relates to problem properties. Town Council President Fred Chirigota says one of the ordinances deals with homes to which police problem are frequently called. Would, would be determined by the number of calls that a property that a piece of property gets in a community, three or more calls in a year for um, illegal activities, excessive noise, um, that kind of thing. What happens is at some point, the police, the police chief would be given um, discretion to notify the property owner and um, begin to keep an accurate record of the cost of police calls, and then that property owner would be assessed those calls. I believe that there's a, um, and if the owner doesn't pay the bill, then they would add that to the property tax. Um, another thing that would happen is if the owner can identify the, the tenant who's causing the problems and begins his eviction proceedings, that would stay any fine. Another deals with the issue of property maintenance. And they, they looked around at um, you know, deteriorated buildings, buildings overgrown with uh, vegetation, um, those that have trash or debris or um, stagnant pools of water and you know, broken windows and hanging shutters and um, properties that look like they're in disrepair um, and bring down the value of everybody else's property in the property, every, uh, everyone else's property in the neighborhood. It may, in fact, um, cause a, a whole host of other problems. So the, the, they've gone through and they've just talked about um, how a property should be kept in a, you know, in a safe, sanitary, non-hazardous manner um, and conform with the, um, the neighborhood that they're in. So keeping up all of the properties increases the property values for everybody and decreases the, the chance that people are going to drive through and say, look, this is, looks like a good neighborhood to target. Nobody's paying attention here. So um, that's going to take a little bit longer going to be, you know, I mean, there's, there's responsibilities for trash removal and um, maintenance of a house, and the, the difficulty is it applies town-wide. Last week, many residents spoke during public comment in support of the proposed changes. Many more are expected to speak during next week's public hearing. Chirigota stresses the importance of education as it relates to these changes. It hasn't been a, a criticism or you know, I, I've heard people who are in favor of it because you hear their perspective and their point of view, and you need to have the other point of view to understand that um, the effect is widespread. So um, I've heard that people have great concerns, and I've been and I've talked to people about their concerns. Um, I have my own concerns, but um, I think that the, the 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 hope was to put together as good a, a group of ordinances as as could be done. I think it requires a whole lot more education and understanding before we go forward on some of them. But, um, you know, counselors have worked hard. The, the group that put this together has gone to every civic association around town to make sure that as many people as they could reach um, understood what was coming forward. Um, we need greater community input. We need greater community education because oftentimes people won't know that this ordinance is even in effect until someone knocks on the door and says, okay, you're now being fined. And we don't want that to happen. We want people to understand exactly what the rules are so that we can all play within those rules without being find, finding out that we've committed a foul and we didn't even know we were in the game. Town Council meets next Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. Well, the winter months are coming with cold weather and high heating bills. Barnstable Senior Center Outreach Coordinator Claudia Borden says volunteers at the Senior Center can help with fuel assistance. It is going to get colder, and I'm sure everybody's hit turned the heat on at least once this month. And um, so I was looking at the numbers this morning, and I thought, boy, we need to get this word out again. So basically what happens is that we help you fill out the application. We do have applications now for new folks who have never had fuel assistance and we will come and help you fill it out. There is income guidelines, and as I was just playing with the math this morning, if, there's, if you live alone in your house or apartment and it's one person, your income has to be less than $31,276. So monthly that means that you're living on about $2,600 a month. If there's two people living in the house, 
your income has to be less than 40,893. So what that means monthly is about 3400, a little more than $3,400 a month the two of you are living on. You have to um, know that they heat the house. They don't care what the relationship is to the people that are in the house. So everyone who lives there, their income is in consideration. But it's a relatively simple um, procedure. You would call the senior center here, me or the senior center. We would make an appointment for you with either myself or one of our volunteers. And we give you a list. We tell you what kind of paperwork you need to bring in. We need to know how you heat your house. We need to know if you're renting or you're owning. We need an electric bill. And not only does fuel assistance help you heat your home, and you usually, last year they gave out about five to $600 towards heat, but they also reduce how much you pay for your electric bill, so it's like a nice little bonus tie-in. And, um, you know, to get you through the worst of the winter, um, it, it helps. It's usually about two months' worth of heat. So it's an easy, painless process. All you have to do is bring us the paperwork, and we'll, we'll fill, it out, fill out the forms and get you signed up for it. Contact the Senior Center for further information. The Senior Center is also placing a big focus on safety, as many would like to stay in their own homes as they age. Gordon says it's a good idea to look around your home, both inside and outside, to take stock of any potential hazards. We, we've been working, we've been concentrating on people and, and their homes because I'm hearing so much that seniors want to stay in their homes and um, and it's not as, as easy as just saying, you know, I want to stay in the home for the rest of my life or even for the next 15, 20 years. So that's where one of the thing, tools you could use, of course, is fuel assistance. But the other thing is to physically make your home easier to live in. A lot of people have... Um, haven't looked at their house, reassessed their house. And you have to understand that as you get older, things get a little harder. Um, and also, we are so creatures of habit that, that we won't see the, the things that are maybe dangerous for us when our, our abilities are more limited. So at, what we're going to do is we have a little checklist, and we're going to go over all of that in a workshop this afternoon, actually, at 1 o'clock. But we're going to go over the things that you probably haven't looked at again in you know, in, in years, but now we're going to ask you to look at them again. Simple things like <laughs> as you're walking up to your house, where are your bushes trimmed? Is, do you, how do you open your door? Can you, how easy is it to open the, maybe you have a screen door and then with a key in the other hand. Maybe you need to put a little shelf there where you can put some groceries down or something so that you can get your door open. What condition are your steps in? What condition is your pathway in to get to your door? Do you have any outside lighting that is either on some sort of a timer or something so that you're not walking up to your house at the dark like a little motion detector <coughs> Thing like that. So we want you to start by looking at the outside of your house and how you get into it. I, you need to spend a whole day becoming totally conscious of everything you do in your house. And there are things that you can do at every level of your age. So if you're already aging in your house, I want you to start looking at your pathways. How do you get, let's say, from your bedroom to your bathroom? Do you have night lights out? Is there a clear path? Do you have a flashlight next to your bed that if the power was to go out, you would be able to still get to the bathroom? This, this, so many lighting is huge, um, it's far, especially as you get older, because as we get older, we do tend to make more trips to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So you do need to have clear pathways because we don't obviously falling. The first thing that's going to get you out of your house is to fall in your house. So we absolutely want to make sure that you're looking at the possible trips and, and things like that. I have a friend who lives alone, and um, I, this is such a simple thing that she did. It totally amazed me, but she put her her living room lamp, one of the, the ones next to her couch, on a timer so that she never walks into her house where it's dark. The Senior Center is offering a series of workshops geared to help seniors age in place. Contact the Senior Center or visit them online through town.barnstable.ma.us for further information. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.